During the 1950s and 1960s, the Soviet Union gradually mastered the technology of hydrofoil boats, which are designed to achieve high-speed navigation by installing hydrofoils on the boats. As a major military power, the Soviet Union widely applied hydrofoil technology to missile boats for military service. However, today we are not introducing military products, but rather a purely civilian hydrofoil boat series. The turning point for Soviet civilian hydrofoil boats came in 1957, when the Rakita hydrofoil boat appeared at the Moscow International Youth Festival. This boat immediately caused a sensation among the people, and Khrushchev once said, let us travel in a fashionable way. In terms of design, the Rakita hydrofoil boat is not particularly special. It has a relatively traditional hull and power system, with hydrofoils installed below the bow and a closed passenger cabin occupying most of the front half of the boat, while the cockpit is positioned aft and higher than the passenger cabin. The Rakita hydrofoil boat once became synonymous with fashion. The Soviet Union produced many of them, and they were used on the Ladoga Lake, Volga River, Moscow River, and other waterways. Production continued until the mid-1970s. Following the Rakita, there was the Komita in 1961 and its river version, which was larger and capable of sea travel, accommodating up to 160 passengers. The Komita has hydrofoils installed at both the bow and stern of the hull, with the cockpit positioned further forward. The overall shape of the boat is more rounded, and it can reach a maximum speed of 70 km per hour. Over 400 units of the river version were produced, and 86 units of the reinforced seaworthy version, of which 34 were used for export. In 1964, the Bdura Vestnik was another type of high-speed hydrofoil boat with a different technical approach. It bears a resemblance to the Komita in appearance, but is a bit longer. The most significant change is in the power system, the Bdura Vestnik uses two turbojet engines installed on the slightly higher sides at the stern of the boat. This hydrofoil boat provides passengers with a very good riding experience, but it can only navigate in calm waters. On one hand, its high speed may affect normal navigation, and on the other hand, the turbojet engines may inhale water in adverse conditions. The Bura Vestnik is not the fastest, however. Another experimental boat, the Chaika, which can only accommodate 30 passengers, can reach a speed of 100 km per hour. During the Soviet era, civilian hydrofoil boats were designed and produced in more than just the aforementioned models. It's just that these high-yield or more famous models were compared. These high-performance passenger ships are not outdated even today. Because the Soviet Union exported some to foreign countries, including our country, many countries obtained some. However, the Soviet Union, which had the largest quantity, soon had very few such boats in use after its dissolution. Like many pieces of equipment from the Soviet era, they were left somewhere to be at the mercy of nature. A few have survived, but have become private luxury yachts. On the other hand, a small number of boats purchased by other countries have operated for a longer period of time. From the perspective of civilian technology, these Soviet-era designs were completely successful and important for countries with shipping needs. They can be used to develop the tourism industry in river transport, improve route efficiency, and be considered waterborne bullet trains. Unfortunately, they all became things of the past with the Soviet Union, and to date, no country has developed civilian hydrofoil boats as vigorously as the Soviet Union.